What's up my friends, welcome back. It's been a long time since I wanted to make this video project and it is finally here. For months I've been working on a new 3D printed project and to be more specific, a fully 3D printable RC plane. This is the Yak 55 design. So why I'm so excited? Well, as you all know, I'm not a professional 3D editor. I'm an electronic engineer. So this was a very difficult project for me since I'm not that good with 3D editing. But for the last two years, I've practiced a lot and improved my skills. So I was able to design each part and make it 3D printable and also radio control compatible. So guys, in this video, I will show you how I edit these parts, how to glue everything together and connect the radio receiver. But I can't test this plane out. You see, a bad thing about living in the big city is that you can't test this kind of plane here. It's more, here in Barcelona, flying drones and planes in parks is illegal and also quite dangerous. So that's why I'll ask you to test it out. This is the first version of this plane and I'm sharing all the STL files in the description below and also on Thingiverse. So if you want to build your own and test it out, feel free to do that. And it's more, if you want to create a video with this flying and share it with me, I will be more than happy to share it on my blog. So guys, let's see how to glue everything together and build this plane. So let's get started. This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. So this is my 3D printed plane here. It's made out of translucent purple PLA filament and basically all the parts have only two perimeters, so they are quite light but also strong due to internal structure. We have places for servo motors for controls and a big brushless motor here on the nose tip. It has a wingspan of 800 mm and a total weight with the battery and everything inside of around 600 grams. So guys, the first thing that I will do is explain you how I made each part and I will try to do that quite quick since this is not a 3D tutorial. Ok, so for editing I'm using Blender. And I know there are a lot of better software but this one is the one I got used to. So to start I needed the blueprints of a Yak 55 plane and I've got those from Google. Once I had the photos I've added them in Photoshop for the top and side view. Now let's open Blender and press the N key. Here we go on background image and select top view and open the top photo that we have just created for the blueprints. Next, we add a second image. Now select front view and add the second photo. Now if I press key 7, we can see the top view. And if I press key 1, we can see the side view. Press the Z key to see wireframe so we can see through the design. This won't be a Blender tutorial, but leave your opinion in the comment section below if you would like to see a full basic Blender tutorial on my channel. Ok guys, so I started editing a basic body for the plane. I use a lot of vertices so the final design will have good details. I first made the main body as some kind of tube following the blueprints, more or less. Then I've made the wings and made sure that it has some aerodynamics. I'll later change these parts and I will add all the fine details. So I've used a tool called boolean. And here is how it works. Let's say that you want a square part with a hole in it. You could create a circle and then the square and fill each face of the part by selecting vertex by vertex. That is a lot of work. Instead just create the square and then the hole. Now I select the hole, in this case a cylinder, select the square and add a new boolean and select intersection. Apply and there you go, we now have a square part with a hole in it. Pretty easy right? But of course, in my project this was way more complicated and I just wanted to explain you how boolean work. So here is what I've made. I've created a plane and divide the body into basic parts 
and then worked on each part. Let's take as an example the nose of the plane. I've created a new plane object and divided the plane here. Now I have the front part of the plane, but it is a full block. I only want the walls of the part, and to be more specific, a wall of only two perimeters, so it will be very light. For that, I duplicate the part and scale it down a bit. I add a boolean as in the past example, and now all I have is the shell of the part with very thin walls. Now I've added supports inside to make the part stronger, give the final shape and connection supports for the wings and so on. I've done then for each part and it was a work of more than 6 months, since after each part I had to print it out and test it. Ok guys, you have all the parts below. Download the zip file and extract it. Now let's see a slicing example. I've used Repetier with slicer. Open Repetier and import the part, in this case a wing part. As you can see, I've got a lot of tries till I had the final part. So this is the A part of the left wing. As you can see, we have some bumps here to set the maximum depth of the wing inside of the main body. Some pads here to apply the glue and have better connection, and finally some supports inside to make the part stronger. Open slicer settings. I've used this configuration, so make sure you have the same. My 3D printer nozzle is 0.4mm. Make sure you have only 2 perimeters and the infill is set to a very low value, since we will have almost none infill. This is the sliced part, where we can see each layer. If we get closer, we can see that we have very thin walls. Make sure that there are no errors and save the G-code on an SD card. And by the way, in the description below, you will find the STL files, but also the G-codes, but I recommend you to create your own, with your own settings for your 3D printer. I've used my Creality CR10, the Anycubic i3 and my Tivo Tornado to print all these parts and they all did a very good job. The final wing part has only 49 grams and for a 15 by 17 cm is a very good weight. These are all the parts for the plane. You have a full description with all the parts below and also the weight of each part, slice settings and so on. So let's see what we have. We have 3 parts for each wing, wing A, B and C, and they all have pads to be glued on, and the middle part has a space for a 9G servo motor. Next, we have 5 parts for the main body, and those are the nose and the middle of the body, and finally a part for the tail together with the windshield of the plane. The windshield is made out of 2 parts, and it has a hook that will be used to close the plane later with the nose part. Next, the nose tip part where the brushless motor will go. Finally, we have all the other parts of the tail and the four controls, which are the elevator, the rudder and the ailerons. All the control parts have some slots for some plastic hinges. So let's talk a bit about some parts of the plane. First, the nose of the plane. It has these plastic bars, so that will be the maximum depth of the wing when inserted, so we will glue it like this. Here on these layers we will place the LiPo battery later and also the ESC for the brushless motor. You can see that the part is quite strong and it has supports all around. We also have these small pads and here is what we should apply more glue. For that let's see the wing. It also has those pads on each end. As you can see all the parts have those pads so glue will stick even better. The next version of this plane will also have some holes for this kind of barbecue wood sticks, and that will make the bond between parts even stronger. Ok, the tail part also has that kind of holes for the servo motors, for the elevator and rudder. Next, the nose tip part has a shape for any kind of brushless motor. All we have to do is to screw it in place here on these holes. Now let's build this plane. Using super glue, I first glued the nose tip and the nose together, with the brushless motor and the ESC already screwed in place, so I won't have to do that once the parts are glued. Next, I glued the middle part of the main body, and once that is done, I put it aside and start gluing the wings. 
I prepare each wing and once all the parts are dry, I place the servo motors on each side for ailerons and make sure that the motor is in the middle position and that the servo wire goes down the wing till the main body. I had to enlarge the space for the motor a bit using the soldering iron. I will correct this error in the next version. Next, I glue the tail parts and the main body is done. Finally, I glue the windshield parts together and all we have to do now is put the wings. Before we keep on going, I have to say that I had a small accident and my soldering iron touched one wing and this happened. Anyway, tomorrow I will print another part. What can I say? Bad luck! I glue the wings and the tail and we are ready for the moving parts. For that I've used this type of plastic hinges. 10 of these for only 99 cents, link is below. Each moving part and each wing has hole for hinges. If they are too small, use a hot cutting knife and make it bigger. Glue the hinge on the aileron and once it's dry, glue the other side inside of the wing and there you go. Now I have all the moving parts connected. I glue the servo motors in place on each wing and for the tail. Once we do that, I've used metal wire to transfer the movement from the servo to the moving parts. When you are sure of the position of the wire, glue the plastic hooks that have been printed as well. Now we have control of the plane, so the project is ready. All we have to do is to connect the radio receiver to the motors. This is the schematic for this project. Supply 5 volts to the receiver from the electronic speed controller BAC. Then connect each servo to its channel, depending on the radio control that you use. It has to be a PWM signal receiver, otherwise it won't work with servos. That's it. Now I connect the LiPo battery to the ESC and the system should power on. Go to your transmitter settings and set the limits for the servos and the middle position of each signal so when the joystick is not touched, both the rudder and the elevator but also the ailerons are in the middle position. So there you go my friends, I can move each control and when I increase the throttle the brushless motor starts. Now this is a 20 cm long carbon fiber propeller, but I also recommend you to use 3 or 4 blades propeller for less vibration. This project is missing some legs with some wheels, so you could land on any surface, and a whole lot of other improvements, and I will do those in my second version of this plane. And as I said before, I can't test this plane right now, but maybe you can guys, so feel free to do that. This is the total weight of the plane, with a 3S LiPo battery and everything inside. It has a wingspan of around 800mm and a wing surface of around 500cm2 for each wing. The ailerons are quite big, so that could result in a very fast movement of the plane. Well guys, you have all the STL parts below and also on my Patreon page, where I might make another giveaway soon. In the future I will share the second version of this project as well, but with all the improvements. On my webpage there is a full guide on how to mount it, total weight, slice settings and so on, so check those out. Also check the schematic for the motors and how to set the radio transmitter. You will also find below some coupons for 3D printers for reasonable prices, so you might want to check those out. I hope that you enjoyed this project and that you like my 3D printed plane. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.